welcome back. This is Gaming with Rob. Thanks for joining me on an e another YouTube video today. Uh, we bring you lots of RTS content, so please make sure you smash that subscribe button and uh, join us uh, on our up and coming video today. We're going to take a very sneak peek of uh, a new game coming up towards the end of 2024, which is Hollywood Animal. This is something that is certainly a lot different to the other games that we've looked at on the channel before. It's not something I've ever come across. Um, I've got an official trailer which I'll play later on. It's about seven minutes long and it looks kind of good. So effectively, you take over from a dying studio. Uh, you've mustered up some cash. Um, the uh, studio is going to absolute smithereens, almost like a little village rather than a studio. It's a uh, it's dilapidated, it's, it's got a poor reputation, it's halfway through a movie, um, and effectively they've run out of money. Um, you basically uh, have enough cash to uh, take over this, uh, I, I call it a studio, it's like a little village really. You get enough money to take over this uh, village, this studio, and you effectively have got to make decisions to um finish the movie that's currently in production it looks like an absolute shower of poop um and somehow you've got to muster up this uh this film and obviously make a bit of cash because you haven't got a lot starting off with try and make it a success and uh deal with all the um issues that you have with uh, you know, superstar actors going AWOL and and uh, the movie maybe not uh, going the way that you would like it to go. So you've got to effectively possibly rewrite the script, uh, deal with the directors, deal with the actors, uh, deal certainly with the budgetary uh, requirements. And of course, everything is just crap. So you've got to kind of build this studio back up. Uh, from the music production to the stage, the lighting, etc., etc., etc. I don't know a lot about the game, other than reading a little bit of the forums and uh, obviously watching the official trailer. Um, I'm led to believe this is due to come out um, during December of 2024. However, we all know what it's like with up-and-coming games. As I stressed about Football Manager 25 being delayed from November now to March 2025, this can happen. This looks like a decent game. Um, sometimes with these type of games, you can't get successful with it. It's like having a survival game where you just know you're going to die. It's just going to happen. It's just a question of how long you can last for. And it's not always my favourite type of game. I like to have success, I like to have achievement, and surviving 15 rounds as opposed to 20, I don't really get a lot from that. I do prefer the Command and Conquer type games, or the Tempest Rise in the game coming up that I uh, reviewed recently, um, where you can actually achieve something and win the battle at the end of the day, or, or win the trophy, or whatever it may be. Anyway, this is Hollywood Animal. Take a look at the official trailer, drop me a comment in the section below, and let me know what your thoughts are. There is one immutable fact in the world of cinema. Undeniable, absolute, immortal, sacrosanct. Something that exceeds mere ideas, technologies, and individual people. Something greater than even the sum of all its parts. And that thing is... You've always got to make a quick buck with a shameless sequel. That's what calls us here today. Our last film, Dexter Storm, was the surprise hit of 1959. But if we're going to release a sequel, we'll need to pick that upgrade. Sure, we can spend some extra money and influence points to speed up the process, but it's still going to take some time. Time enough to get everything nice and ready. In the original film, the dashing cowboy, Dexter Storm, rescues a helpless maiden from the clutches of Slumpy Chuck and his gang. Of course, shooting a dozen villains in the process, but that's not enough. This time, we need truly breathtaking battles with hundreds of extras, horses, stunts, we're talking huge sets. We'll need to build a soundstage of absolutely indecent proportions. And to make the costumes and props just as defiantly pompous, we'll need a props and decorations department. We'll hire the most reliable contractors. We don't want any surprises on this one. 
We need to work on the story, too. Naturally, we've got to show our viewers the same thing they saw the last time, but we also need to make them believe they're watching something new. Slumpy Chuck escapes from prison and kidnaps the unfortunate Gracie again, who by now is legally married to Dexter Storm and bearing their first child. Oh, and that evil bastard Chuck, he... Well, there's something missing. Needs a little pepper. Let's get someone from the script department to come up with a fresh move. Ah, there we go. Torture in captivity. Just what we need to shake up our complacent theater audience, yeah? Of course, Chuck got a little carried away when an enraged Dexter Storm storms the bandit camp alone. Gracie is already dead, and Slumpy Chuck has escaped. Dexter chases him through the desert for five days and five nights, and finally puts a bullet in his forehead. But revenge won't quiet our hero's burning soul. In the end, Dexter Storm goes in search of new adventures. You know, in case we want to milk this rubbish for another sequel. Unfortunately, we won't be getting great marks on continuity. After the first film, our golden boy, Andy Goldbeck, started starring in the cheap westerns our competitors churn out. Then one day, he went on the set so boozed up he was practically sleepwalking, fell off a horse, and broke his neck. Like I always say, you can mix alcohol and heroin during production, but never for more than 50 shooting days in a row. Audiences don't like it too much when you replace an actor. We need to get a legend. There's only one guy for the part, and that's Chris Pankin. But for some reason, the idiot decided he'd retire at the peak of his career. You'll have to use an unconventional approach to get him on board. You know they found him in a cabin in the forest before they brought him here to Hollywood? Well, let's give him a little trip down memory lane. Sometimes you can't beat a little torture in captivity. Life imitates art, they say. Anyway, Penkin's happy to sign the contract. And the ribs will mend in five to six weeks, just when we're wrapping pre-production. Not everybody is thrilled working with Penkin. He can be a little wild and hot-tempered. Our director has already had two heart attacks. He doesn't think he'll survive a third. We've put him in a beautiful villa, made him more willing to take the risk. We used the same actors for the other roles. We're filming nearly everything inside our giant soundstage. What could go wrong? Pankin, that arrogant baboon, went to a restaurant for the first time in years and got so angry when the waiter spilled some wine that he made the boy lick it off the floor. The press will be hammering that drum when it's time for the film's release. The situation on the set isn't any better. Pankin has been all over the director from day one, whining about the script. That Neanderthal can hardly read, but he can say he's never seen such wooden dialogue in his life. We did our best, but the director's heart couldn't take the abuse. We had to find a replacement, Bronto. Filming keeps dragging on, but they're spending money at breakneck speed. Penkin is on everyone's last nerve. He's always late on set, takes any criticism like an insult, and throws tantrums out of the blue. A couple of weeks of this, and the new director is already careening for the madhouse. He made quite an extravagant gesture, shot a horse dead right in front of Penkin, just to show him who was in charge. Penkin says he can't stop thinking about it. He can't concentrate on his part, so filming is moving even more slowly. To get the film out this year, we're moving to 14-hour days and 7-day weeks, scrapping some scenes and shooting almost everything in one take. Doesn't matter how bad it is. The crew has been on edge for a long time, so to help smooth things over, we're increasing the level of landscaping. Hmm? That'll make the studio more beautiful and more comfortable. The return of Dexter Storm has barely wrapped, and the results are already depressing. The film's artistic appeal is in the toilet. It doesn't take a focus group to tell you when you've made an exemplary piece of shit. But has any of that ever stopped one shameless sequel from cashing in at the box office? Not even one. We picked Thanksgiving weekend for the premiere, just like most of our competitors. But we have friends who can help us clear the calendar, yeah? We'll have the police spend the next few weeks raiding every other studio in town. That'll make it hard to finish their movies on time. And it wouldn't hurt to buy up all the prime advertising space in the country for the next few weeks, but even that won't be enough. There's one organization that can promote our film through its own channels. They seem like good boys and they have a nice leader. 
A bad person wouldn't go around calling himself an Imperial Wizard, would he? No. Aside from that, we just need a handful of cash to cover up that scandal with Pinkin at the restaurant, and we are ready for release. The critics see right through it, but the audience loves it. After all, we told them it's exactly what they want. The first month at the box office, the studio raked in a record $29 million. The film will keep printing money for at least a couple of more months. But that's not the end of it. Mm -mm. Because in the world of cinema, there's one immutable fact. Undeniable, absolute, immortal, sacrosanct. Something that exceeds mere ideas, technologies, and individual people. Something greater than the sum of all its parts, and that thing is... You can always make extra money on the merchandise. There you go then, there's the official trailer. How exciting is that? So once you've uh, discovered how to finish the unfinished movie that you were left, you go on to try and make uh, sequels or brand, uh, bring in brand new movies that you think will capture the audiences at their cinemaplexes uh, back in the day, let's say. It does look like an exciting RTS simulated game. Um, not overly fussed on the graphics, if I'm honest with you, but it's more about the uh, gameplay and how you navigate uh, these real-time events, let's call them. Uh, I'm I'm actually excited about it. Um, looking at the actual game itself, you're probably looking between twenty and thirty dollars for the game. I will try and find a little bit more information about the pricing and possibly bring you another video. What are your thoughts on this? Is this one you, that you're excited about? Is it one that you're going to get your teeth into? Do you have uh, some news that you want to share with our subscribers? By all means, drop this in uh, the comment section. It's over and out for now. This is Game with Rob. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.